Hola! We're in Spain, we're at Cartagena Circuit and we're at the launch of the 2020 Triumph Street Triple RS. Now you're probably looking at it and thinking, well what's new? Because on the face of things it doesn't really look that different from the old model, but the big news is that Euro 5 engine. Triumph is ahead of the game with a lot of competition and this is one of the first Euro 5 engines in motorcycling, let alone uh, the sector. So. We will get into the technical side of things later with Stuart, the uh, Chief Technical Director, Chief Technical Engineer. But for now, there's more power, there's more torque, there's more mid-range, and there's a freer flowing engine. Uh, we've got DRL running lights, and on the aesthetic side of things, there's a bit more attitude, a bit more aggression. Those DRL lights sort of set the tone for the rest of the bike going backwards. So the chassis remains identical to the previous model. We have got Super Corsa V3s, but apart from that, we've got a new dash, there are sort of new bits and bobs and fancy gizmos to look at. We've got a morning on the road followed by an afternoon on track. So we're going to get an extensive testing session on the new Triple Treat. Well, good morning, and a very fine morning it is. I got massive jet lag. I was in Texas at the Texas Tornado Boot Camp, and I've had no sleep, and I've got jet lag, and I don't know what day it is, and oh, one of my favorite views ever, this. Oh, look at it, good morning. <laughs> Oh yes. It does sound nice, doesn't it, Saint? So let's not go to Rain Road, let's try Sport. Well, that's better. Whee, that's not. You know, this isn't the Moto 2 Daytona engine. A lot of people have been saying, oh yeah, it's this and that, it's, it's nothing like it. Oh, bloody hell. That mid-range. Oh, yeah. This is new, obviously. The first thing you see is the dash. The riding position feels the same, it's identical. The chassis, the, the geometry is exactly the same. The Triumph have sold 90,000 of these little beauties since the launch in 2007. That was a bike I was uh, I was there for. We were in um, Lake Garda, and that kind of set the the tone for what was about to come. This is, you know, trying to say it's the lead best in class, best in you know the best middleweight naked. I mean, it, it, yes, it is, but it's kind of in a class of its own because nothing comes as close to this in terms of performance. It can do all the naked stuff. It can do all the easy practical stuff. But it's also a super sport gem, and I think this year Triumph have gone for that. They, you know, there's been no mention of uh, making it easier to ride, or you know, or more user friendliness like they normally sort of bang on about. This is all about making it sportier and more aggressive and more capable. And of course, we've got a blipper. We've got a blipper, baby. I'll get the boring bit out first. I think a lot of guys were asking, and because going back to that, you know, ninety thousand sales figure. There's, there are so many of these on the UK roads. I'd love to know the exact number, but a lot of people have been asking about whether or not the blipper could be retrofitted to the Gen 2 765. And I was chatting with the tech guys last night and it's a no because it's not just software. You need hardware. The gearbox is slightly different. Obviously being Euro 5, we can't turn the ABS off, but obviously being Triumph and being European, uh, we have the option to have a track mode so we shouldn't have any issues on track later on oh it sounds good sounds really nice now, it's good to know even with Euro 5 that the bike can still sound good 
it does sound really nice. Oh, tricky. So the geometry and the suspension and the brakes are unchanged. So, needless to say, it still feels sexy. Mid corner, or anywhere in a corner. And these brakes are so good. Not only have we got M50s, but we got the uh, RCS master cylinder, which you can adjust span and ratio. So if it's a bit too, if the bike's a bit too much, you can tune it down for the road and turn it back up for track and vice versa. But it really is a a lovely setup. I mean, now with this extra torque in the mid range, whereas I think the R. The Street Trooper R, the sort of middle tier bike, was the best for the road because it had that mid range and had that punch. Now, this has got the punch as well and the top end, so you don't have to be too fussy on gear changes. I mean, I'm, you could use third, fourth, second, so many choices. <laughs> oh, this sound is addictive. I have got a little bit of a tingly finger and thumb going on, but that was a byproduct of the old bike as well. I say old bike, it's fundamentally the same. Whee! Yeah, the bars are quite vibey. They're not, they're not the uh, smoothest. But overall, with half an hour in the seat, without any big bore, without any major changes, there's a hell of a lot more mid-range and I think the throttle as well is, is far lighter, the, the engine itself feels lighter. I mean they were onto a winner, Triumph were onto a winner with this 675 triple then the 765 triple anyway. But what they're doing with it and these refinements, it's... I can't honestly, you can't chuck enough superlatives at the engine anyway. And with this added mid-range and the way the yeah. throttles... Yeah, the throttle connection is still sweet. Yeah. But it's just lighter and just more willing. It doesn't feel as suffocated, which is strange because it's Euro 5. I love these Triumph launches. You get a who's who of racing royalty. We've got Gary Johnson, Taylor McKenzie, obviously, with us as a tail rider. Um, Billy McConnell, Luke Stapleford, Dan Linfoot. It's all a nice little jolly. In terms of the sort of boring, practical stuff, as I said before, the, the bike feels exactly the same. You know, you jump on it, the, the switch gear is slightly different the way it functions. Obviously, it's a new dash. Um, it's still very, very plush at the bottom. The engine feels very smooth, predictable. The throttle connection is nice. There's no jerkiness. You can take it from as low as sort of 1500, 2000 RPM. It'll still pull cleanly. Yeah, the shifter is nice. I mean, it has to work in a massive rev parameter, so it's not the slickest, uh, but it, as I said, it's got to work in all sorts of environments, so I'd rather have it working at low speed than not working and having a better top end, but again, the, the, the blip is not, I don't think it's the slickest, but then again, it works every single stage on the dash, so swings and roundabouts, mate, you know what I mean, swings and roundabouts, you know what I'm saying? Sexy, everything about you so sexy. As I said before, you can't turn traction control off, but rider mode has never been more importanter than now. Because you can turn TC off, you can have track ABS, which means you won't be locking it up going to the corners or running on into corners. And you can uh, choose your throttle response. So rider mode really has now become vital. A test of a street triple wouldn't be a test with a street triple without a wheelie. So um, we're now in rider mode, so you can turn it all off. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, it's still wheelies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's still wheelies. Yeah, it's still wheelies. Yeah, it's still wheelies. And here we are back at uh, Circuito Cartagena. And that concludes today's road ride and this afternoon after luncheon will be some track action
So Stuart, Chief Engineer at Triumph, thank you for joining us. Um, please explain more about the Euro 5 updates because although I can get, a, get the gist of the updates, we've got 9% more torque, 9% more mid-range and 7% less inertia. Well, the team that's done this engine yeah. is the team that's responsible for Moto2 engine and the Daytona uh, 765 engine as well. We wanted to take the best of what we had previously with the R model and with the RS. So we've managed to uh, maintain the power yep. at 123 PS, but we've boosted the mid-range quite a lot. Um, we're two uh, newton meters higher, yep. um, but a much, much fuller mid-range. So we're getting all that character that we had with the R and sort of on-road response and torque and the power at the top end is still there. So in terms of the internals then, what exactly is different? We've got a lighter crank, Okay, no, what we've done, we've reduced the inertia of the gears that are actually attached to the crank. Okay. So the primary gear drives the clutch and yeah. it drives the balance shaft as well. Now, they previously had anti-backlash gears on there. It's something we fitted to bikes for many, many years. But we've um, decided to change the uh, gear tooth profile. Uh, we now selectively assemble, we grade the gears and selectively assemble. So we've been able to remove those anti-backlash gears, right. which has reduced mass and also reduced the inertia. Yeah. So the engine's gonna spin up quicker. Okay. okay, so that's just part of it. Yeah. Um, the main things that have given us the increase in torque and maintained the power whilst hitting Euro 5 is a lot of work on the exhaust system. Yeah. Um, the exhaust cam has been changed as well. Uh, the intake to the airbox has been changed. Right. So there's a, a lot going on. Yeah. We've basically made the bike free of flowing. Yeah. So the exhaust system's free of flowing. Uh, we've now got two catalysts instead of one, and they're in series. So they do more work. Uh, the engine's basically clean and efficient to start with, but to get it down to legislation limits, you're gonna need after treatment. So free of flowing exhaust system, which is fantastic. That, in, that allows us to maintain the top end power whilst we tune the mid-range as well. Uh, the exhaust cam is um, actually gives a slightly less overlap. It gives for the mid-range, we've got a different balance pipe on the headers as well. There's a lot of work gone into it. Yeah. Lots of people have been asking about the R and the S model. So obviously this is the premium, the elite model, Street Triple. Will we be seeing less premium models? So will we see an R, will we see an S? Okay, well, we're concentrating on the RS. Yeah at this launch. Okay. We've got a lot, a lot of new models yeah. in the pipeline um, and we're going to be showing a lot more. Okay. So you're going to have to wait and see. Right. Okay. Thanks Stuart. Okay. Cheers. Welcome. You're all ready guys. Look at that. Here we go then, Circuito Cartagena. Hi right, boys, steady away, enjoy it. Another stonky wheelie this time. Okay. First lap I've got. All right, mate. Yeah. This is like the TT. Oh. Right, here's a wheelie. Feels so sexy on the front end. I mean, really, the only limiting factor on this bike is ground clearance and body position. It wants to deck out there. The only issue, really, is these mirrors get in the way. Don't like this bit here, horrible bumpy section. Beautiful down the box, flippers working nice, and the gearbox and those brakes are just incredible. Mince meat of this section just flicks from one side like no other naked bike does. And again here. Wants to deck out here though. Driving on. And even with these road Pirelli V3s, feels so good on the side of the tyre. I 
And again here, just chuck it in. Well, that was jolly good. Here with Gary Johnson, uh, TT winner, uh, road racing legend. I think it's fair to say, isn't it? Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so now you've calmed down a bit, and you know you're not winning as many races. Um, <laughs> you, are you, it's fair to say, <laughs> safe to say, you've you, you've found a new class for me. I had no idea about this Triumph Seven Six Five RS Cup. I had no idea it existed, and then you are racing in it this year. Yeah, basically, Alex. Obviously, with my association with Triumph, this fantastic new bike. It's dead simple, dead easy, no limits to put a class together, something like that's cheap. It's not a CB500 cla cup class, no. it's a modern sports bike, you can either run it fair in or not, run can it you? in the unfair in way, there's two separate classes scored. The bike works good in both ways and I just went, so you can ride it near enough like this with a few bits of fiberglass on, or put a 675 or whatever fairing you want. Yeah. Like, like I had some, obviously some 675 fairings kicking around, so I bobbed it on, some people put other fancier ones on. Yeah. And uh, basically you can ride it like that. I rode it, I took it out of the workshop, I rode it as a road bike with road tyres on it as we're riding it today, just obviously without the headlights on and the rear number plate. Yeah. And then throughout the season, I've just put small upgrades on it, decatted the exhaust and, a, and an end cam, which the rules allow, that's, yeah. it, that's it, you can't have a full system. It's a lovely soft engine, it's got torque, it's got power, but it's not in your face, wild and that. So you've got the confidence and you can override the bike, which means you have plenty of fun. Exactly. And decatted with an end cam on it, 129 horsepower and everybody's getting the same power yeah you know so that's 130 horsepower nearly what more do you want around the track and like you said earlier off camera you know all these zx10s and fire blades and super bikes and stuff you know it's all right well we're getting a bit old now aren't we you know it's nice to have it's nice to have something that you can just absolutely let rip on and just enjoy and rather than being overridden by the bike yeah as you say, everyone, as soon as you're getting on it, everyone's wanting to do wheelies on it, do stoppies <laughs> on it. Doing there, you want to go dragging your elbow on it. It's yeah. just a confidence inspiring. Yeah. I went, I've had the most fun I've had for years riding yeah. this bike, and that's just plain and simply because I'm confident on it and I just love riding it. So, session two then. Put simply, there isn't another middleweight naked bike that feels as sexy as this on track. The brakes are just stupid. I think they might be a bit too much for a lot of people. Bit of ABS kicking in there. That's the first time I've had it. It's obviously not as invincible as the last one. I mean, 765 really is the magic number, isn't it? You don't want any more power than this, really. The way it delivers it. So satisfying. I mean, it's almost effortless to ride. But that doesn't detract from the just how much fun it is. Now we talk about the perfect balance, and this is the perfect balance. Power and weight. Performance and fun. Alright, let's see if we can do a hot lap of Cartagena on the street trip of RS. With the throttle. To help get it turned. Saw that 
flipper is just gorgeous. Pulling that ground clearance a bit now. All the valves are bouncing like a sort of thin lady's tits. Not a ground clearance there. Brakes just get you anywhere. A lot of people compare the 790 Duke to this bike and they're totally different. So that KTM comes from the Duke range which is inherently motard. I think it's probably more fun than this but this is just, this is all about speed. Speed and noise. Usually we do a review of a bike but this kind of, you know, the updates it's not a massive change over the old model. Let's get, let's, let's get that out of the way first. It's not a massive, massive change. You know, we've got more power, more torque, and it managed to keep it the same weight in Euro 5, guys, than Triumph for onto a winner, and it is. On road, it's so easy to ride. It's fluid, it's intuitive. It's almost, as I said on track, it's almost the perfect balance of power and weight. There's really little to criticize on the road. There's nothing wrong with it at all. I can't think of anything wrong on, on this bike. It is the perfect middleweight naked. On track, you know, you could criticise the ground clearance and the brakes, the ABS was kicking in now and again, but certainly with the ground clearance, it's like criticising a sumo wrestler for being too fat. It's there for a purpose. This isn't going to be taken on track every weekend. It's not the ultimate track day toy, but it does combine the two really well. Road and track, it's one of the best all-rounders ever created. Simple as that. Now, the Street Triple initially started off as a naked Daytona but it's sort of grown and evolved into this unique state, and this is it today. It costs 10,300 pounds, which again, Triumph have managed to keep. Uh, it's the same price as the previous model, which again is a bonus. It's available in dealers for November, December time, so again, pretty soon. Would you rush out and trade in your old bike? Probably not, unless you've got the money. I mean, look, the engine is, it's not just a little bit better, it's much better. The mid-range, the freer, freer, the freer flowing engine and throttle it's lighter it spins quicker it's more confidence inspiring but as i said it's not really enough to warrant rushing out and trading your 17 18 or 19 bike but it's almost a 10 out of 10